welcome, welcome back, back to, to HBO, HBO Girls, Girls Rewatch. Rewatch. I'm Amelia. And I'm Evan. And today is an amazing day. It's Tuesday, October. I'm waiting for my logic pills to kick in. My okay, nootropic yeah. logic pills. So right now I'm actually a little illogical because it takes 15 minutes for them to kick in. But once my logic pills hit, I will be so good. And you know what? I um, clean our bathroom bleach every week and I don't really wear gloves. Is that safe or is that why I feel weird? That's why every week you feel a little bit weaker. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I really feel like this morning in yoga, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I used to be able to. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Oh, God. The last two episodes we haven't gotten to have an intro just us two girls it's so fun that just us gals this get is to actually gab. a really nice first time talking today that is true and it's three o'clock <laughs> Um, I know it still feels like morning, but we're so excited for our guest. This guest, I literally listened to her podcast like all of college, so it's gonna be kind of surreal vibes no, I know. for her to be then on my podcast. There's like, an ocean. If twenty one year old me could know, there's an ocean of knowledge with this guest. I also have to just quickly ask you, what the hell are you dressing up as for Halloween other than Lorelai Gilmore? I can't figure out. I don't know what I'm oh, supposed to dress I'm up as. I'm just gonna be Lorelai Gilmore all three nights. All three nights. Right, we're actually moving in the middle of Halloween. Why would I need a third outfit? <laughs> well, it's just like if we're doing for a second. three or four nights of Halloween. Well, what are you gonna be? Um, I'm people keep telling me to be Borat with my new haircut, which is like it does. Borat hurt. is something that I've heard a lot about, but I don't know what it is, and I don't want to find out. Sorry, I need to turn the dryer no, off. If you guys can hear that, that's also, not the dryer. That's a, someone vacuuming your carpet outside. Oh, also, can people see my eye twitching? Can you see my eye twitching? Do you no. Know to, do you know how to I'm not seeing it. Tw- I'm not seeing it twitch at all. Unless you're blinking, it's a twitch. It's literally going like. Can you believe we're almost season? Can you believe season three is almost already done? No. Next week's the finale, y'all. I say I can't believe it. <laughs> and then we're officially going to be in the latter half of girls. Like, it's not the beginning. It's not early days anymore. We're grown-ass girls. Yeah, we're midway point next episode. Literally. And then we'll do Tiny Furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Which, the girl who sent us the DVD copy, we I'm still so just sorry. need to find a Her DVD name is player. Shana but too. We, we will return it to the library. Well, no, we, we actually, Amelia's coming to my house for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. So we plan to watch it then. Yeah. Anyways, um, all love. All love. We'll be back in one second with our beautiful, gorgeous guest. And Cross is over here with Sydney Washington herself. Hey. Hello. Hey, y'all. Yay. Oh, my God. We're, we're so all, excited. We should all get on our phones for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, we're nonverbal for four. Yeah. Perfect. Um, we're so excited to have you on. We have to start off with the most important question Where were you when girls came out? Where was I? Um, I'm going to say that I was definitely um, in a nightclub Mm. getting (laughs) fucked up. I was definitely in a nightclub doing lines for sure. Love that. You're from New York. Were you here when it was happening? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is girls is one of those things that's kind of like broad city. It's kind of like law and order SVU. It's like one of those staples in the New York community of uh, the arts that like, if it's happening and you just so happen to be, that solidifies you as a citizen of New York. Right. Mm-hmm. It's everyone's vehicle. Yeah. I swear to God, there's all these shows where it's like, it's not, we have we have a friend that was complaining the other day. They're like, we don't have high maintenance anymore. We don't have yeah, girls. There's no vehicle yeah. for yeah. people in New York anymore. We're like, yeah. you have TikTok. There's no. a vehicle. No, 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 you're no right. it's not the same. <laughs> it, it was literally like high maintenance when you would see a friend, you're like, yeah. they've made it. They've made it. They've, I don't know if they're going to return my phone calls because they're in it. <laughs> right. you know? Yeah. A snake got out of their apartment in one scene and now they kind of have the world. Yep. Yeah. And perfect. they were so quiet about it. They didn't tell anyone. I'm like, oh, okay. So this is a, this is a thing. They're you're like, going to get a demo. I shot one day. It's like, okay, well, you're different forever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're different forever. We do need a new one. I feel like we need a new show right now. I don't know. I just think that the the climate is changing. Mm. And before, I felt like we weren't so like self aware of like um, TV and things of like storylines. But now everybody is like, oh, ooh, write that down. That could be a plot. Or ooh, ooh, that's a show. Or ooh, that's a movie. And it's like people are less like being in the moment mm. and trying to make create something that specifically just for TV. And that's lame. Whoa. Say that. I'm, gonna, I'm you on the record. So hard. It's lame. It is lame, it's and that's lame. all we do all yeah. day. It's, <laughs> when, you're, when you're curating art, 
Yeah. Lame. You, it's the art has has to happen. You're such right. a Marnie. Yeah. You're creating art. I it's just <laughs> it's just gonna happen and it's authentic and mm. then you don't have to worry and lie and scroll through, you know, other people's timeline to find things to inspire you. It's actually happening. Totally. Oh my yeah. God. Beck is like, drag on this these podcast. bitches to <laughs> filth. I'm doing it <laughs> officially. Come down. Yeah. Wait. Actually, your filth is kind of the biggest pep talk I've had in weeks. Really? Yeah. yeah you're, you're being Patty Lapone at us right now. Oh, you're okay. being Patty Lapone. I'm Andrew Randall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> This is such a good episode. I love it. Wait, so did you watch it when it was live on the air? No, no, mm. I did not watch it live. And I think that's um a lot of the things that are happening or has happened. It's like you hear about it. People are talking about it. The people who are supposed to be watching are watching it. And then the people who are in that community, it's like, I don't need to watch it. I just know that it is good. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to bottle it and watch it like seven years later. And you're like, oh, that eats. It eats. <laughs> it still holds up. You can't watch it in the moment. You have to wait and then see if it if it's still as good as it was when it was happening. Right. Whoa. I will say the people we know in our lives that are just now binging the show are mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, in a way that like we'll never have. Yeah. I know because we were so young when we first watched it, so we don't really remember the aha moment of how brilliant no. it was. And if you get to watch it seven years later, you're like, oh, you really get to live in a mode and appreciate how good it is because everyone told you how good it was. Yeah. It's like Sex in the yeah. City. Sex in the City, I was watching it while it was happening. And then I like re obviously we continuously over like we overwatch it. And I'm like, mm. oh, no, pen to paper. They were writing their ass off. There really was thinking about the culture at the time and seeing how long it can be spread out. And, you know, yes, Carrie, terrible, terrible, (laughs) like, main character. Mm. But that's most main characters. They're not good. And so when they are good, you're like, oh, you're pandering. You're pandering. (laughs) I don't want that. Well, to go back to your TV show comment a second ago, and just like that, it's a complete replica of what you're talking about, how people were just like gathering ideas and then putting them into a TV show. And it's exact comparison of Sex and City first and just like that, of the cultural difference that you just highlighted. I don't want it. I don't want it. And and just like that, it's because like you're you're so aware of like how much diversity is needed. And it's like in this world, actually, it's weird to have this many people from different cultures. And it's just Mm -hmm. not real. Like that's not their lives. And yes, people are like, it's not, it's not right. But then in um in Sex and the City movie when they had Jennifer Jennifer Hudson as the assistant. Oh right. Oh my god, the shoes. It was gross. It was like (laughs) actually it's better if there's I don't want any blacks or browns or I don't want it because it's just like their world is such a bubble. Mm. Keep it. Keep that bubble. That's for them. And And we'll have something for us. But let me tell you one thing. I as a person, I don't want to be nowhere near Carrie Bradshaw. I'm okay. Right, like, I'm keep okay. me away wanna, from her. I don't want to see anybody that's like me near her. I don't want her to be <laughs> friends with anybody. I don't. She does not have to have a gay friend. Ooh. Say that. Oh, okay. Specifically, um, an, a POC lesbian that she don't need that. Right, exactly. Yeah. There's nuts on her story. I don't want it. Yeah. Well, my friend who's closest to Carrie Bradshaw that I haven't talked to in two years. I was about to be at a birthday party with her mm-hmm. this weekend. Like, and she wasn't there. And honestly, I was so scared about walking into this apartment. And then she wasn't there. And it kind of was the biggest breath. If, for me not to have a carry for a single second and kind of get that burden taken off of me. You're right. We don't need it. We don't need it. And, yeah. and, then, and then I think more people need to have that conversation. It's like everybody isn't for everybody. Mm-hmm. And it that we have to stand in that. And especially on TV, it's like, oh, this person is supposed to be for everybody's story. Absolutely fucking not. I don't want to be everybody's like, Ooh, she's my best friend. I don't. You don't need <laughs> yeah. me as your best friend. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm going to tell you to do some dumb shit and then we're going to get in an Uber and then lose money. Like, you don't need that. <laughs> Why do you want that? Do better. You I know? would say the one caveat to that is that Sex in the City, when it first came out, the audience was so, pri- what we were talking about, primarily white women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think the show evolved in such a way that it became so encompassing for so many different audiences that, like, they, I think they really want to reflect that more and just like that. But, Again, it's not, <laughs> not it's, you being in just like that. No, but, <laughs> but it is reflects poor, like it's not it doesn't do well in the show. Like it doesn't feel natural, yeah. and like it, the show really loses a lot of it. But I do think the show became 
so much more than when Dana- Darren Star writes for white women in their 30s and then it kind of became for everyone. Yeah, but the you know problem is is that when you let the network notes yeah. like and you you take them you yeah. take the network's note. No, you don't don't take their notes. They what do they know? <laughs> they don't know. Right. They're not the people. They're literally just signing off and they have the money or whatever. But they're not on the lower level doing the groundwork for the actual story. So why are you like structurally Maybe I'll take their note. Sure. You, mm. you might know how things are supposed to flow. But the actual lives, you ain't got it. You just right. don't. So, like, why am I now listening to you telling me how, what Miranda's life is going to be now? You don't know. Oh, so now she's an alcoholic uh, <laughs> gay? Get the fuck out of here. Who, why would even anybody say remotely, that's the story I want for her? Get out of here. Like, And then yes. Carrie giving up her freaking... The iconic apartment for, I'm sorry. A jewelry designer? B- no, oh, bland ass Aiden. I know. Who got kids now? Oh, no, oh, no, Where no. do you get those kids <laughs> no. and why did one of them break their leg? It's like, how does he both spend this much time apart and then one breaks his leg and it's like, okay, now it's time to pack everything up. It it's hurts. All it, took? it hurts. I it know. hurts. And that's what I'm talking about, the self-awareness. No, I need people to go back into their closets, mm. back into their bubbles, <laughs> and let's start creating again in a world of delusion because this like, everybody's got to be a part of the, no, I don't, I'm throwing up. And that's why Samantha is somewhere like getting DP'd <laughs> like she should <laughs> at fucking 60 years old because <laughs> if she was supposed to be in the show they would have her like being a professor somewhere and I will I'll, I'll mm, honestly right. I will jump out of the first floor window I will I don't want to die but hurt me she would have gone adjunct little, yeah. yeah she would have gone adjunct yeah. mm-hmm. that's such a good point yes <laughs> <laughs> But this wow. is, this isn't is about girl. Sex in the City. No, so we girls. did we did go off, but we almost always bring up Sex in the City. In this yeah, but Sex in the you City like did that walk so girls could fly, could fly, and you know take a glide in the sky, you know, <laughs> over the New York City uh, skyline. Well, you're Literally. the first person I've ever heard to do walk to run. Now mm. glide versus fly. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Well, because I think that like girls just watching, you know, some of the seasons, it's like it, it didn't. There wasn't parts where you're like, oh, we're really going left hard, like mm. and just like that. There's so many like sharp turns that it's. Were you guys on crack? Like, why? <laughs> how did this happen? You know, there was just like a. The, I feel like with um, Lena's character there was moments where I was like, oh she's not gonna grow this is she gonna stay the same <laughs> like know. over and over and over again and we're gonna keep watching oh that's what we came not? in for yeah, yeah. oh 100 i think and just like that it's the first experiment with ai writing and that really it has is. to be sad like they it really is. they're doing that so we can have the strike just yeah. to have a little example <laughs> my god wait that's the clip that's the clip that posts that that's it it must go viral immediately mm-hmm. really well now we're gonna bring to our, oh is it girl oh no no no, no, no. okay wait so let's are, jump into yeah. this we don't know episode all our this we episode. have to get them wrong Today every single time we're covering season three episode 11 i saw you is that what it's called yeah i saw you yeah i got so nervous <laughs> um so we do um a minute to win it synopsis where we popcorn style try to quickly summarize what happened and don't mm-hmm. feel pressure actually do it in 20 seconds because yeah. we each get 20 seconds we've never done it okay before. yeah okay we've um, never done Evan's it once before us off and you'll finish us off yeah okay. and the big thing is i'm gonna get i'm just gonna do mindfully emotional base and then amelia goes sign a scientific with it did you see the youtube yes. comment today it's like every week when evan says a bunch of words and then amelia explains what they <laughs> <laughs> it really works perfectly okay wait let me um here's our minute to win it let me the, put the timer up the time starts i'm like why am i okay wait where does it start uh, oh yeah uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Ready, set, go. Adam and Hannah are fucking on a couch. And then, what? Hannah's all the way back at the apartment. Adam's like, please do not be here for a single second. Then we zoom into uh, Jessa dancing on the floor. And Jess- and Shoshana's like, I just had the craziest day being an NYU student. But that's every day being an NYU student. And Shoshana's, or, and then Jessa's like, I am so damn bored. Marnie's at the gallery and she is working with one of her favorite artists. So Marnie did accept the assistant job with Sujin and is kind of like doing all the work. And Sujin's really bad at it. And then Jessa like strolls in to visit and the old old woman whose art is in the museum is like in love with Jessa's whole vibe and so offers Jessa an archivist job and Jessa's like slay and Marnie's like why is my life so hard and then yeah Adam and or Adam and Hannah are really at odds because Ad- Hannah is like oh my god Adam is gonna leave me and break up with me and doesn't care about me and he cares about Broadway and Adam's like girl please stop being crazy 
Whoa. <laughs> oh, and then I got to I got to finish the <laughs> end. Go okay. Hard. Ooh. We'll fill wow. We'll, we'll, we'll fill right. it out. We'll fill it okay. It's really okay. hard. So then um uh, uh is it is it Marnie? Marnie yeah, yeah, yeah. is it, is it Marnie? Okay, wait. Oh, so, so Hannah is then at Patty Lapone's apartment with Elijah. Okay, wait. No. Yes, it's Mar Yes, Marnie is hooking up with um uh Adams. Is it his brother or oh, his, Ray. Ray? Ray. Yeah. She she gets caught. This is at this is literally at the yeah. end of the episode. <laughs> right. I'm missing That's a chunk. Beautiful. But um but then uh uh, Hannah goes in while they're having sex and oh interrupts God, yeah. them. And she's like, oh, Marnie, you can never like judge me again because what the fuck are you doing? I love that line. Yeah. And I did. I did appreciate her doing that because it was like, oh, sometimes you got to catch your friends doing dumb shit. So it's like, don't you ever try to <laughs> give me yeah. advice because you're over here. Laying with a dog right now. <laughs> Marty hiding under the bed as if Hannah will forget what she's No, saw. literally. Yeah, That's she perfect. was like, oh, he made me. I was like, Marty, <laughs> she actually, that doesn't hold up now. No, it doesn't that, a court It was law. funny then, but it's actually, that's actually anti-woman, her blaming. That's and it's anti -woman. not being true. Yeah. It's oh, absolutely. True. Yeah. And just one scene to fill yes, in. Yes, please. No, no, yeah. And Desi and Marnie are making beautiful music together. Um, oh yes, this yeah, right, yeah, yeah. that's the part. No, where, this is yeah, one of the most complicated yeah, yeah. episodes. We really yeah, never talked about this. Plot-wise, this had so much. This happening. had too many plots. Yeah. Okay, um, so many different comp cuts. But yeah, Marnie has a big open mic night. You know, she's been writing music with Desi, and so they sing a song together. And Marnie is like pining hard for Desi, but Desi is of course dating that girl Clementine, and so Marnie Clem. feels so like deflated and is like, "Well, I need to get somebody to love and care about me." So she crawls back to Ray, and Ray's like, "I don't want to do this. This is a bad idea." And she literally takes her top off and she. He's like, let's fuck. And he's like, all right. And then, of Hannah course. Hannah has an amazing time at Patty Lapone's apartment where Elijah finally unlocks something inside of himself where he's actually not an underdog, but a Kennedy. Yes. Um, <laughs> Getting all those compliments. But it was crazy because he's like gay. So it's like, <laughs> you should have already felt those things about you. Why are you letting yeah, this Yeah, Patty's like, why do you have low yeah. self-esteem? What yes. the hell is going no, on? Yes. I'll say this is my whole story. We can dive into it. <laughs> but this whole week, this is what has been happening. Okay. Today. Okay. Um. And, and then, then what else? Oh, Patty Lapone's husband is actually really hates his wife, but loves her so much at the same time. But that's marriage. marriage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, um, Hannah that. dramatically quits her GQ job because she's so stressed out that Adam is becoming more of an artist than she is. And she feels like she's selling out. And she's like, I won't sell out. I'm meant to write. So she dramatically quits. And everybody's like, girl... Yeah, but before she quits, she's dragging everyone. Like, you're not really doing your job. Like, are, do you feel like you're living? Like, is this what life's about? Like, is this your job? Like, you're better than this. Like, can, can you write? What, what, ugh. This is, she's like, the way that she's unraveling, but also the self-righteousness in it is like, this is beyond disgusting, especially since like Jessica Williams is in there as a black woman. It's like, Okay, girl. Yeah. Who, who are you doing this for? But that's a loaded writer's table because you also have Jenna Lyons there and it's mm -hmm. so sad it's the last time we get to see Jenna Lyons. I know. And she's really not on TV again until... Real Housewives. Real Housewives. But the range. The, the range. range. The range. The credits. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. She's her, really having her moment now. She is. Yeah. They, they. Everyone's obsessed. She's everyone's a obsessed. legend. And you must respect her. Literally. Absolutely. And, and that's one minute. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, let me just like, that was a minute. That was yeah. like, it's actually less. Yeah. We had time to play Honestly, with there. Honestly, that was <laughs> under a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and well, now, now we have to answer or uh -oh. ask the uh -oh. most important question. Okay. Girl, what girl are you? Um, I want to be, uh, I'm going to say I'm, I'm Jessa. Mm, mm. Yes. Just like kind of. Just free flowing, like yeah, yeah, whatever, like accent, cool, living life, kind of sloppy, but not. And obviously, she's attractive, but she'll downplay <laughs> it. And you know, drugs are involved, and there's just this sort of aloof chaos that I really love about her. T. Yeah, yeah, I would pin you as a Jessica. I say Pyla just... Pone. We kind of said that earlier, but oh, you're because right. she's older. <laughs> no you're actually no, younger yeah, than no. us you're just yeah. somehow really I, wise yes <laughs> yeah, exactly I love it that that age. Yeah. <laughs> we went to school together what are you talking about yeah. we all went to Oberlin yeah this is perfect NYU's writer table I know Jess I is really in her 
in her bag this episode. She's just a- dancing and then like gets a job with like an old. She's famous the woman. unluckiest and luckiest girl alive. But well, that's what it's about, though. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the people who are overthinking and very strategic. It's like yes, you're gonna get there, but at like what cost? And mm-hmm. also, it's just like there's other ways to get there by like actually not putting so much pressure on yourself and just being you. You're so wise. But also, <laughs> you know, just as blonde and white. So it's a mm. different like lucky, unlucky girl syndrome. But totally. I don't know. I just I just love the way she's kind of like, no, this is shit. And I think that's that is the way I this is what's annoying about social media. Now people are calling out stuff like how Jessa does it, but in a way that is actually disgusting. Wait, what do you oh. mean? Because Jessa comes into the art gallery and she's like, yeah, I guess. Like, the, no, I'm not really here for, because they ask her, like, what do you think about this painting? And it's like, nah, it's not really good. Like, I wouldn't have it here. And then um, she's like, yeah, we should just take it off. You're right. And I like that transparency but then online now the transparency we got to cut it they were done like we don't need all of these like well this is what i think and like no that doesn't look right and it's just not helpful well i would say the caveat to that it's like online never feels as authentic it's like jessa's betrayal of like Mm -hmm. i don't actually like that painting yeah like online as much as authenticity you have it's like there's always pre-thought there's always like rehearsal and Mm -hmm. like you don't actually know how genuine it is where Jessa being like so like, and that ugly bold guy has to go. <laughs> yeah. It's so much more like, yes, I yes. believe you, girl. Mm-hmm. And you, yeah. you know what? And you're so, I would say Jessa too, because you walked in with so much wisdom. <laughs> and you can tell it comes from experience. It does. It does. Yeah. You kind of have to go through it to actually give people, I think, proper advice. Because at the end of the day, right, everybody can say, oh, this is how you should do it or this. But- the person you want to listen to is the person who's actually doing it because they have more perspective, you know? Mm -hmm. People are going to tell you, oh, that doesn't look good because of their aesthetic. But then there's somebody who's like, I wore that. And when I went out, I mean, I got no hoes that day. So (laughs) I want to go with that person, you know? Because they've they've been and they've taken the L, so they know. No. Wow, that's That's so so real. It's kind of like, well, Amelia and I are both like big book readers, and sometimes we have experience in life, of course. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Um, we definitely can like draw a lot of our like ad- advice to one another based off books we've read or media we've consumed. Yeah, the way I'm like, I heard this in to. a self help audio book. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really yeah. because I'm in my first relationship right now, and I always turn to Amelia for relationship advice. How many relationships have you been? Zero. Yeah, so it's really blindly. So blindly, blind, the blind. I love it. My I'm, stick hit your stick. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> I'm like, I have an amazing thought on this. And it's like based Dark. on nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. also, I will say, like, when I was, uh, I can't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> when I was growing <laughs> up, uh, <laughs> when I was growing up, I mean, we literally, you know, didn't see everybody else's lives. We didn't know mm. what there was. So we we're literally having to do the work and, and make these tumbles and tell each other our tumbles in order for us to like grow but now i mean it's just too much access mm. i know too much i'm I, and now i am overthinking everything because of the way i want to be perceived and the way i want people to like like want to like me and th- in that sense it's like ugh. before i only wanted oh these 30 people in my class Ooh. to like me and now it's like i need millions and billions of people to like me what kind of life am I living? That's exhausting, you know? Yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. But like just yeah. walking in and being like, I don't even care about this person. I don't need her to like me. And I, I don't even care what my friend, my friend is at work. Fuck her job. Like that <laughs> and that experience, I'm like, oh, she's probably been through that so many times with people who care too much about their job and care too much about a person. So you literally have to just come in and be like, none of this matters. We're all going to die. You're so, I mean, the thing yeah. is like Jessa has this respect. She respects this woman, but like she also doesn't have respect for anyone in some respect, but she mm-hmm. doesn't disrespect this woman because she's old or in a wheelchair. She just respects her the same way she disrespects everyone. Yes. And that's equality. Equal, yes. Equal opportunity for sure. <laughs> equal opportunity to get this disrespect. Let's exactly. go, Jessa. Exactly. She's an icon. Yep. She really is such an icon. We Wait, love Jemima. What girl are you this episode? Oh, I'm like I never saw this question coming. Um, <laughs> uh, la, la, la. 
Okay, I mean, Shoshana's only in it for a second, but it's so... A smidge. A smidge, but it's like her walking and having the busiest day of her life. And it's like, those are the kind of days I live. Where it's like, and my friend got in this fight and I had three classes this day. Mm -hmm. And it's just like all these things I'm packing and like Amelia will be dancing in her room and I'll be like... (laughs) (laughs) Jess is literally like coming down from like whatever drug. (laughs) And you're like, I think I'm going to do a hair mask. (laughs) Yeah. But I love the rundown and just giving people your itinerary. That's yes. that yeah. is a personality, but also like not being mad at people for them ignoring you. Oh, absolutely! I, I know. That. Like she said that whole monologue and was like, "And good dancing, girl." Mm-hmm. I mostly mm-hmm. talk for myself. Like I, I talk, and I'm glad other people can listen. But mostly, the words that come out of my mouth are purely for me. And um, I think that's the way to move in the world because mm. when you, uh, I, I don't know. I'm going to say this, but no, say I hate those people that are like, I'm doing this for the girls that look like me and feel like, it's like, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> you're literally not. You're like, you, <laughs> how you move when every step you take is for you. And to say that out loud, like I'm doing this for younger people. Ew. Right. Why would you, why I don't give a fuck <laughs> about younger people. You you have a whole life to live and you're going to live it. So I need to be true in my step for me, you know? Oh, with all the Oops. love in my heart and all the light in my heart, I have to say this might be this girl's journey. <laughs> oh, my God. Really? <laughs> I know. Like, who am I this week? Um, It's so clearly Marnie in such a – the way, like, Jessa waltz in, like, makes magic happen and then leaves and Marnie is just there shaking. Like, mm-hmm. I follow all the rules. <laughs> but And then all her friends are like, she's so contrived. She needs to stop singing. Why does she act this way? Like, that is so how I, like – Oh, but then she's really secretly talented. But then, yeah, but then and she can't sing. And sometimes it comes sing. out. Um, but she like, can sing, but wait, no. wait he was, oh, what's his name again? The Desi, Desi. Desi was, he was dragging the open mic and just oh. like drag, like she's stiff. Like, yeah. I don't want to have to go do that. And oh, I'm like, yeah, Andrew, Ma- that. yeah, I was like, wait, do people think that about when they come see our comedy? Oh, I, know. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's such, I hate to hear that out loud, but it's real. It's real. It's real. I mean, that's a music open mic, and it's amazing how there's actual audience participation in a comedy open mic. That was a big ass open mic. But that is how it is for music, though. There's just like way more respect for music than you know us talking in a mic doing LOLs. You know, they people are like, oh, like this is for real a hobby. But like music, they're like, oh no, that's that's so intrinsically in your soul and connected to your third eye, and it actually like (laughs) builds us as people, and we come together. And we are going right. to be we're going to be present and respect it, you know, even if yeah. it's bad. You I mean, the to, way they yeah. were all talking so much shit, and then she started singing that amazing well, song, and Shoshana was like, "Hannah, how does it feel that your friend's about to be famous for singing? This is incredible." Mm-hmm. And Hannah's like, "Yeah, that was good." Yeah, but that also is in, in with everything. It's like nobody um, respects or believes until they see like other people being like, "Oh yeah, no, this shit is d- d- oh no, this is dope," you know, and that's. That's like when you post something online and it's it doesn't have a lot of views and like but then when people start commenting mm. and things then everybody's like oh well let me get on the this bandwagon because I don't want to be left out on like people knowing that this is good so that is in that sense like when we see Marnie singing and you're like oh bitch she she, <laughs> she got the notes she's doing it you're like oh wait I will look stupid if I'm not on yeah. this bandwagon you know yeah. oh, we have to move the category of this podcast from TV to show to like advice and life. <laughs> I Advice in life. I yes, this is God. what happens when you have an elder on. <laughs> You're teaching this lesson. All our friends are like, D- you, they're so dumb. I love them. All hard. They're, we're, they're smart, but they don't know anything about life. And oh, no, no. That's no. the life am, here. I am dumb. Like, I, capital D, <laughs> I glued uh, vampire fang, fangs on my actual teeth with nail glue no. just a week ago. So I am dumb, but I also have lived to tell, you know, Inspira- inspirational stories, you know. Yeah. Well, help, you do that to, to, to tell us. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. You're doing life to tell us about yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I and then I'm gonna want you to go do partial things of what I've done. Yeah. Because like me saying it is not enough. It is time to lean into I Lena. Do. And there's Ooh, so much to cover. I have so, so much. Where should to we say. even oh, begin? Okay, let's talk about um Hannah and Adam's dying relationship. Well, we have to start up top with the sex scene. Oh, please. Yeah. Sex. They're having sex. The sex is happening. Good, good. We love. We know girls, they are going to have sex. Mm-hmm. Um, But I hate the codependency after 
hooking up. That is mm. that is so manipulative and disgusting. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It's like sex is just so personal and you know, after you're releasing things and coming and whatever and looking in each other's eyes, it's just like let me let me breathe. Like don't say nothing to me. If you're not saying, "Hey, what would you like me to order from Domino's or whatever place you want to be?" I don't we shouldn't be talking. <laughs> we should not be talking. We should be Sitting in silence and figuring out what's next for tomorrow, you know? Ooh, literally. No. I mean, this was Hannah's whole problem this episode is like not giving Adam literally one second to be himself. Yeah. Yeah. That is really, when he's like, kind of he's like, Han- he's literally saying word for word, Hannah, I love you. I care about you. I need five minutes. And she's like, no. She's taking him space. And, you know, I will say there's a specific type of beige woman that does that (laughs) that that is a specific type of um white woman energy that she has and throughout the whole show and i'm glad that she stays consistent but it's like i want to know the people who are like on board with what she's doing like Mm. yeah i get it like it's scary that your hot boyfriend is on broadway it's like no no i need you to (laughs) like have some accountability and seeing how like how manipulative that is. Yeah, I think she, I, yeah, I, I, she fully is like so like all over him. At the same time, though, he fully did move out of the apartment when they were living together. Yeah, but he had he to. He needed the space. Yeah. yeah That's guess- the only way a relationship is going to last. If you move space. out. Space. Yeah. You have to, I don't think people should be living together every day. Yeah. Every day. Right. There's got to be like one week where you're like, yo, I'm going to see you next month. I think. At the end of every month, the couple should be like, I'm, somebody is going to be like, I'm out. I'm, I'll <laughs> right. be back. One week a month, it's like only one person's there. No, yeah. exactly. My dad, every single week, would travel for three days a week growing, three days a week growing up. And like, I do think that was the best thing for my parents' relationship. Yes. If they spent every day together, it would have been hell. But they actually spent hell. that time apart. Yeah. It is hell. Even if I love someone mm. down and I'm like, I love everything about them every day. It's too bitch, much. Every day. I, and I, let me tell you. As a lesbian, codependency, twin and him. We're doing it. <laughs> but in the long scheme of things, it's like I have to give you that space to let you know you miss me, mm. that I am an asset. Mm-hmm. If you're with somebody every day, you kind of actually lose the value of like what they make you feel like mm-hmm. um, because you're not away. You have to be away from them to be like, oh, damn, the energy is weird when I'm not with him. T, when I moved to LA to be with um, my ex-girlfriend who I thought was my soulmate, my friends, I was reassured in my friendships because they were like, damn, Sydney, I miss you. I miss you so much. Even though we spoke a lot, they're like, I miss you, like your presence, your energy. And then when I moved back to New York, it was wild because people kept saying, yo, New York is now official. It's back. Like th- things have shifted. We know that the shows are going to be good. The conversations are going to be, you're going to come in. It's going to make sense. And I was like, damn, that made me feel good. And I think that's what people need in relationships too. Yeah, totally. Absence makes the heart grow yeah, fonder. Abs- it really does. It really does. It really does. And it's controlling to be like, we need to be with each other every day. It is. Well, and okay, well, Hannah and Adam break up next episode, right? Kind of. Yeah. It's a slow move there. It's like, it. well, she goes to Iowa and they're like, we're kind of ending it, but we'll see what it looks like when we get back. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is really, well, what happened last episode where it was like, she started being really needy. He's like, I need space. This episode right. is kind of about her, uh, like, still not giving him that and him, like, getting really frustrated. So, yeah, the prior episode, Hannah's like, or so Hannah does this really big thing where she does this role play and then Adam's like, you're being so dramatic all the time. I have to go move in with Ray. I've been talking about it with him. And she's, she's like, why? It's like, because you're a drama. Yeah. And now yeah. she's kind of like, even though we live completely apart, I don't want to actually be separated from you at all. And that's why I'm coming over in the middle of the day Her with no bananas. Up? Being yeah, like, exactly. I thought you needed Girl. bananas. It's like, can you? No. The way he's just like, hi. It's like, yeah, what the hell are you doing here? Let me tell you. I'm not getting wet by a pop up. Don't you be popping up? No, 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 no. no. That that's immediate grounds for. I'm calling 
the cops. Which What's Hannah wrong does. with you? Who yeah. just shows up? I don't care. Even if I like love you, like we, I'm like, right. I don't even want my b- best friend to be like, I'm in the neighborhood. No. Girl, you give me time. Because what was I doing? Or how do you know, like, I need my space. Also, he's, Broadway is not easy. It's so freaking hard. Yeah. I'm reevaluating my whole life. <laughs> Why? Why? Because you do pop ups? I'll do pop ups. I'm drinking water. <laughs> you do pop ups? Like what kind of pop ups? Uh, Evan loves pop ups. No, I just um, I guess I think I have to reevaluate because I'm definitely anxious attachment. So I think it's like I, I don't. I'm feeling more and more secure every day. But it's like if someone's mad at me, I can't handle that. Like I've uh, my parents always had a rule growing, but it's like don't go to bed angry. And it's like I don't know. That's always the best strategy. But it's like making sure to talk things through before. I don't know. It's hard for me to sit in anger or like disappointment Mm -hmm. or sadness for too long. Like I want to resolve that feeling as much as possible. But I do think it's more of an internal thing than actually having to deal with anyone else. Me and you are the same. And I love that you're solution oriented and you're like, it's not that serious. Let's just get over it. And it's like, but people need time to process. And that's where we have to be like, okay, I have to let my anxiety just go all the way down to the ground, drop down and get your eagle on and just be like, it's okay to sit in the feeling of discomfort because then things will really get resolved because when we resolve too quickly then things are missed Mm. and then things are like fake resolved and it's just a glaze over like oh yeah i do love you yeah no no no. but we didn't really talk it out so if you give somebody a couple of days then they'll get to the root of why they were upset or why they're like being weird with you you know oh my, that I mean, is so, so true right. because yeah. it's like sometimes I, like somebody will want to resolve the thing and so I'm still like not even fully processed like mm-hmm. why I'm frustrated and then I'll be like yeah I don't want to fight like let's like I forgive all and let's move forward but then we're trying to move forward and I'm like remembering like all mm-hmm. the things that like now that I have a bit of perspective from like the extra day of thinking about it yes. and I'm like actually whatever and then when I try and bring it up they're like I thought we already like moved past this and I'm like well well, it turns out we didn't. Well, uh-huh. That's and kind of us. That's we're kind of We're podcasts <laughs> and we live together. Yeah. So we're kind of business and pleasure. Y'all love each I other. Know. That's well, love. We love, love each other, but we didn't even know each other before moving in with each other for so long. But we were Ooh, such surprised. a... Yeah. I know it's a lesbian relationship. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, hope it works out. Yeah. yeah. But, ooh, you know what? Yeah. Whenever you're feeling this way, right? Mm-hmm. I think whenever you're having an issue with somebody, you got to talk to five people. Oh. Because by the time you get to the five, fifth person, you're exhausted. You didn't want yourself out and now you're like now you can sit in the oh i don't know if they're mad at me or not because you've ran this this story or whatever by so many people and they've given you all these other perspectives by the time you get to the fifth person you're like i don't even think i care no more just oh it'll be God. figured That's out so, i got i get to the three i got to three right now so that, no, those two left. I th- actually i yeah. think 10 10 10, oh 10 will God. really drive it home where you're like, damn, it's not even that serious, this is you perfect, know? perfect, because I'm really yeah. open. I'll tell strangers all my problems the moment I meet them. I don't even tell one person. I just write my notes up. <laughs> no, no, no. Because then, like, you, then you're re- when you write stuff down, then you reread it. And there's cringe. Yeah. And, re- and I always write things. something down, then I read it, and I'm like, you're not valid. And then I delete the note. <laughs> 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 like, it's no, over. keep the note. You're not valid. <laughs> and actually get a tattoo after. Um, yeah, no, I think that, like, uh, me and you, I can't, like, I can't stand what people are mad at me. I'm like, or I'm constantly thinking people are mad at me. And it's like, you almost have to step in your delusion bitch mode where you're like, why would somebody be mad at me? I'm fucking dope. All I do is like give people joy. And then you have to trick yourself into believing like, if somebody's mad at me, they're going to tell me. That's is that's their problem. It's not mine. I It's not me for to do this guessing game to figure out if you fuck with me or not, you know? So if you sit in the like, they're grown or well, you're not, but your, <laughs> friend, your friends are not grown. So that's, that's the thing. Like being young, I will say this, that like, there's a certain age where you shift and you're like, it is wasting time being like petty and mm. backhanded. And then like passive aggressive, that's, that's a disease. The passive aggressiveness <laughs> is, yes. it's, it's an illness. It's an illness. And, but it's also an illness of like youth. But when you get like a certain age, you're like, I don't have time for all this. Like, I'm not going to give you the cold shoulder. So this is what you did. At dinner, when it was time to split the bill and you were like, I just got this salad, you knew what we was doing. We all splitting evenly. Mm. If you don't want to do this, don't come to dinner with us no more because we we go in halves. <laughs> we we splitting it up. You know, like that's <laughs> yeah. just a, that's just like what a scenario. Yeah, it's just a scenario that like, 
people have gotten mad about, which is also, it does not matter. But yeah, that I'm just throwing that out there. Also, if you know you're going to all split the bill at the end, everyone can have more fun. Like, you yeah. can just go yeah. for it. Because then have, it's like, yeah. well, you didn't have to just get the salad. Like, you should have got a fun little sparkly mm-hmm. mojito. Yeah, well, some people are on budgets. Yeah. I eat me. But I do know living life of this sense of like, yo, the money is going to come. Yeah. The money is going to come. And that's also a delusion, bitch, era. The money is going to come. Like, let me let me just eat. Let me get the tuna tartare. Let me get two of that. Like, (laughs) it is irresponsible. But if I do think if you put in the universe, like, it's coming back, it's coming back. Like, Mm -hmm. it, it, it essentially will come back. If it's not real finances... Then the next time you go somewhere, somebody's like, oh, I pay for everything. What? Thank you. <laughs> like, oh yeah. my God. Like the the relief of that, like you might not get the money per se, but somebody is going to take care of you. It's going to come. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I You're... I swear to God, literally when I was like 22, I was so operating under like, I'm never going to have enough. It's I'm never going to be able to like pay everything. And then I like literally was like, I have to operate from a sense of just like knowing it's going to work out. Yeah. And immediately got like, Double the amount of money I was getting, like in mm-hmm. a way that I was like, "Oh, it was never that deep." Do you? Um, this is like a weird thing, but like you, you, you feel like your parents do well. Like you come from yeah. like a pretty like decent yeah. financially household yeah. or whatever. And then like I moved out, and they were like, "Okay, we're not paying for anything anymore. Good luck." And I was like, "They scare you with that. They lying. They're gonna help you. Like, don't listen to parents. Like, parents literally are like, I need you to do your own thing, so you don't call me. But like, please call me." Please don't, don't, right. I don't want you being like, I got to do an OnlyFans because I need to pay my rent. It's like, no, you don't. Like, yeah. do the OnlyFans because you like showing ass and yeah. whole. Like, do that, but don't be like, oh, I can't, like, if I can't, if I don't do this, like, I won't be able to eat next week. They don't want that. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, my, I it's like, empty threats. It is. You're gonna, threats. you're gonna hold it right back to me or right back up to them and tell them what you're gonna do. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. We, but That's also, exactly mom, I hope you're me. listening. Yeah. I'm like, mom, can you Venmo me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, it's so Patty Lapone being like, you need to, like, I don't audition. I chose, I don't need to audition, and then that worked out. Because like, she has high self confidence. Yeah. The, high self esteem. Her being like, Elijah, you need to have self esteem, and him being like, oh, okay. And she's like, no, actually, though. No. I just or else you're going to end up like my husband. I didn't have self esteem two weeks ago, and now yeah. I do. And oh, now you got, oh, I yeah, got a Evan, haircut. And how did that Thing. Yeah, Evan, a haircut. And then we took a picture on my bed that was kind of like American Apparel <laughs> themed. And then it popped off on Instagram. And now Evan's like, I just found out I'm hot. Oh, yeah, it was really wait, big for me. What happened? Well, let me see the photo. What is oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. of course. Yeah. Oh, no, I, it'd be so hard for me to find. Yeah. Oh, where is it? It's not, <laughs> on your, it's not your screensaver right now. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, no, this one photo shoot changed bitch, everything yes. for me. Yes. Okay. This um, is no, cute. people come up to you in public and they'll actually look you in the eyes after you get a hot photo online. This is good. This is giving American apparel for it's sure. It's giving American it's apparel. Like youth, like, Church slut. I love it. Church, Church slut. slut. It's good. Yeah, that's good. Church slut. Yeah. Amazing. No, but I think it was like, I I think again, not to bring up a relationship, but giving, being in a relationship, it holds up such a mirror to oneself. And mm-hmm. I didn't realize like how much my self-esteem was being impacted. I'm like truly, I don't know, it was too intimate for a podcast, but my, my, be- my boyfriend called me beautiful and I literally started crying for 20 minutes. I was mm-hmm. like, why has that happened to me? I have to really assess this. Well, people don't say that to you? No, no one's ever said that. What? I start crying again. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's okay. So then that's well, it's kind another of thing. Elijah coded. Yeah. Well, this is another thing with <clears throat> with the whole thing, like the the whole friend group or whatever. Like, you need to have people that are like rallying for you in a mm. sense of like, uh, oh my God, you are my Beyonce. And so mm. the fact that you haven't heard that, then that makes me look at your friends like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, even on my friends' midest day, I'm still like. Yeah, bitch, you got it. Like that's <laughs> it's it's really not that hard to give compliments, especially since we're constantly online liking things, writing comments to celebrities mm-hmm. that don't freaking know you. So it's like that makes me mad because it's like it really doesn't take anything to give to lift people up. I have mm-hmm. to say this: maybe I I wasn't ready to hear it, oh. and maybe that's a twist. Okay, maybe yeah. that's the twist. Okay, sorry, I was ready no, no, to go no, off. Like, you're right. Like, hey, you're, you're right. right. I'm kind of looking uh, yeah. back at it. It's yeah. like, no, I wasn't ready to hear it, and then oh. I was finally ready to hear it. Okay. Yeah. Like, when he said you were beautiful, what were y'all doing? So the first time um, <laughs> is before this. Course, this full con- sex. I need context. I need context. Full sex. So sex in the shower. You said it, and I couldn't look him in the eyes, and then later on. After okay, well, we're he's like, weird. Sex in the shower, first of all, is the most awkward thing, and you're wet, and it's like, <laughs> I, who is 
sexy when their hair is literally coming down <laughs> like <laughs> like the freaking no. circle <laughs> like uh, the ring or whatever like no i'm i'm not no. i'm not hearing that and like then there's right. a little bit of soap in the corner of your eye and then you have like a little booger yeah. dripping down like i'm gonna tell your boyfriend no that that you know when somebody gives you a compliment where you're like nah you're you're being shady like there's no way that you think that i'm beautiful right now so actually you taking that in and being like hold on i'm not ready that's that's a moment that's a mm. moment for you to be like nah i don't i don't see that but if you were like in the park the sun is hitting you freaking it's sunset and like you have a really dope shirt on and somebody says you're beautiful you're like yeah i feel that you're right and the sun is hitting your beautiful like what is that brown hazelish eyes oh. yeah yeah <laughs> you would you would believe that you would believe but in a shower nah babe Nope, not even on my best. That's a like really a good point. setup. <laughs> like they set up like a shower for me, and they got lights, and I'll, I'll still be like, "No, I look like a wet a wet dog." <laughs> Sorry. Whoa. Well, mm -hmm. our wow. lives are literally changed. I know, literally. I'm like, I can't go with sketch comedy to show I after know. this. I know. Audience. This that is that is a messed up thing of like having a really good run on a pod and then yeah. doing like something that the you're like, saddest you're like thing what you can the f of. is this? Like, I really am better than that. But you know, that's how I was feeling on the train when I was rushing here and I was stressed out. And this like 20 year old guy is like trying to talk to me, and I was like, "Sir, I am 30 blank," and he's like, "Well, I." I date date older women and I was like I'm <laughs> I'm gonna jump in front of a train now because why the fuck are you saying this to me I don't need this I'm late I need to get to this pod I want to talk about girls like <laughs> I was stressed but now I'm here and I'm like it was worth it not to bring this up but I was on the JM the other day and someone went, went in between the carts and then jumped out what no I, mean, I think they're fine but they didn't you think jump. they're fine you think they're fine after that they didn't, it wasn't like the above ground part. Oh, uh, well, also, it's just like <laughs> New York and the, the like, uh, a lot of times it's like people are not like suicidal. They're just like, I just need to get to the next spot. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, like let's I go. Know this like, oh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to go on foot now because this is dumb, you know? Like, I get it. I, so, oh I literally get it there. I would be so, like the train, the, the, the J train would not, like for some reason it got shut down. Oh. And so- that's why I had to get on a. I had to get on the M or Which something like that. Was today? No, something an oh, incident oh. happened. An, an incident happened. There's um, always a freaking incident, and that's why I was mad at girls. I'm like, where are the train incidents? Mm. What's going I know, on there? They are never talking about the Let's train. Let's get in into it. it. It's they're, they're like, they're like, um, because we don't take the train per. Like I, I, <laughs> and I understand that for them, but it's like, you cannot do a New York theme thing and not have the subway. The moment of the subway. You're so right because in this this episode alone, there's a moment I noticed, and I can't remember what scene it is, but they're traveling from one spot to another. I think it might be Elijah and Lena, and they literally start the conversation in the apartment, and then they end the conversation at the front door of the location. It's like there's 35 minutes in between there where you guys were riding the yeah. JM, mm -hmm. and you didn't talk it out. Stop then. lying. Yeah. yeah, stop lying. Yeah. Someone didn't offer you gum and like candies. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't believe it. <laughs> it's not real. I haven't bought in a Kit Kat. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I, I the, the whole time story. I it, I hate rooting for like a a straight man, but I was just like, yo, Adam, I can't wait for you to get out of this. This is just mm. too toxic. I hate saying Are you that. Are Adam Stan? Like, do you like him, or is this kind of the one moment? Or just this episode? I think overall, it's like. There's always like a dumb guy. Like mm. we're always there's always like the love interest is going to be kind of like you just got to get to know him. There's so many layers mm -hmm. and he is like really sweet and I think he does rock with her even though I'm like he should have been jumped off this this train. Oh, he should have yeah. jumped up between the J and the M. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But this episode solidified my my like stone cold I do not like you. You mm. was, like, and then her being at the job and being like, are you guys really even living? The it's like factory. I can't stand oh, yeah. people like that. Like, like let, let people find out on their own. They're going to figure it out. Like, uh, well, I didn't, I didn't get fired. I'm quitting. It's like, no girl, you're insufferable. Mm. You have to get out. You have her to. Her exit speech was truly <sighs> like, it's like she was fighting so hard to like be like, I'm not crazy. Mm -hmm. You guys are all crazy. Yeah. And they're like, girl, you need to like just quit and think these thoughts like with your friends at home for a night. Like, yeah. You do not need to be saying this to us. 
I, there's one moment in this episode I, I'm dying to bring up. I can't what? stop thinking about it. Is it about um, Marnie and the Desi, Desi yes. and then the girlfriend? Clementine? Oh, it, it spins Ooh! off into that. It I was off ready into to that. Bop, bop. I was ready to fight. <laughs> That Clementine chick? Oh my Clementine. god. She plays a lesbian detective in every single TV show, and this is the one time she decides to play straight girlfriend. She did yeah, that. Right. She didn't yeah, do it. Right. I think she thought she was job. nailing it, and maybe it was the writing. Mm. But it's just like, I hate the, the like, oh, the girlfriend is going to be, like, underhanded, petty, oh my and god. insecure. Pick, pick a lane. Either you're going to be petty lane. or insecure. But I don't right. need both. If your name is Clementine, just be, like, sweet. Yeah, oh. and he also said that you were going to be like really nervous. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, he pillow talking with you. I don't need to know about what y'all doing on your pillows. Mm. And Watching if, the light drain from Marnie's face I know. was and truly devastating. That lie. What? The homeless lie. Did you guys catch that? Where no. she's they're like, oh, Marnie, come out with us. She's like, oh, sorry. Um, I have to go to door homeless kid in the morning. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. So yeah, funny. Was, I was like, okay, obviously and she's reaching. what creative energy is? Because the ooh, whole time he's – And Marnie's – And Clem's like, oh, my God. He's never had so much creative energy in months. And, like, I think creative energy means he's horny. And he's horny oh. for Marnie. And he's fucking Clem even harder than ever. Oh, and right. sometimes that's helpful because it's like, let's – Like, another T, right? Yeah. You are not the all, everything, be all. It's okay if somebody is, like, kind of lusting after someone else. Like, l- lusting – um, in their like mentally, I don't mm. think you should be physically doing that. But yeah, there's going to be a, in a relationship where you're like, yeah, actually, I like that girl that's at the coffee shop, and I she always is like getting my espresso. I only order espresso, but then she put a triple. Like, yeah, <laughs> like I I like that. Like, it's okay. You should be securing someone having thoughts or kind of horny for someone else. And believe that they're not going to act on it. Mm. Yeah. I think that's okay. Like, as an adult, I'm going to say yeah. this on the record. It's okay for f- people to have, like, sexy feelings for others, long as they're not doing it. Mm-hmm. I think Adam and Hannah might be open in today's day and age. Oh, everybody's wow. a, everybody's a poly pocket. Yeah, everybody's everybody is, like, <laughs> fluid. And, like, you know, as as a, as an uppercase L, you know, I I might be in my Q era or B era. I don't even know. I don't even want to label it. Mm. But my eyes have been like, oh, that guy's cute. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, oh. The, guy, the guys are looking cuter now. But it's also I'm B for bored. Because I'm after, uh, I'm also the the breakup in the LGBTQ. Right. So I'm, I'm, my feelings, You're what like, I want. I need something else. Yes, I need something else. Yeah. So back to Clemen or Clemmy or whatever her name is. Oh, she made me so mad. I could not stay. I hated that. Well, our landlord, our future landlord, we have to negotiate an apartment with. He's like, doesn't know if we should live there or not, but it's an old elderly gay couple. They only have one apartment. Mm-hmm. The way he's like, you guys, I don't know if we, you guys should live here because you're going to be B for board and you'll move out after a year. I. What does that mean? I just need to show you what he's texted us yeah. today. The way this guy was like, we don't know the third girl, me, so we don't feel comfortable <laughs> giving you a lease till we find out if she's cool enough. or not. They do a vibe check. And I was like, Amelia. I'm not cool. He's like, that's not my this. thing. Should I read it? You guys are doing way too much to get back. That's a long, that's a big. He says, when the paragraph the is like this, the- <laughs> when the paragraph is like this, okay, so are we going to brunch or not? No, he yeah. goes, yes, very entertaining to my text. He's like, yes. I'm like, I really want to live here. So it's very entertaining. So He's where's this other place? Us. It's just it's Bushwick, a gorgeous apartment like, in Bushwick. Call, it's a perfect it's apartment. Call L stop. Okay, that's where y'all going. Maybe. I really want to cite a place that's like a 15 minute walk from here, uh-huh. but all the doors um to the don't close and it's plexiglass instead of regular glass. Yeah. <laughs> so there is that. <laughs> I don't want to be the one. I'm like, who am I? I'm not, yeah. you know. No, no, no. Uh, Please I'm don't weigh in on I'm this because yeah. we will kill each other. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to be. <laughs> so You're then, too smart. Beyonce said, everybody on mute, and you have to do that no, sometimes exactly. when people are talking. I'll read you this after. It's the most yeah. ridiculous text yeah. I've ever received. Yeah. Oh, is there anything else for an episode? We have so much to impact. Well, um, uh, let's just talk about the artist with Jessa. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. so fun. Yeah. Um, but well, really quick to wrap up Hannah, Hannah quits the GQ job because she's feeling like so stressed about like her giving up her creative aspirations because her boyfriend mm-hmm. is literally like not paying attention to her because his career is do- well, going Patty's so well. Well, Patty's kind of speech for, Patty with a speech and a husband, a husband being oh, like, yeah. I gave up on my career. 
to help her oh, career. Oh yeah, Hannah. Hannah is so obsessed with asking Patty Lapone like deeply personal You're questions. You're Patty Lapone. <laughs> Being like, Patty, like, am I gonna grow up and hate my husband? And she's like, Yeah. And she's like, Okay, got it. And then quits, quits her job. And then like they go out after the open mic to meet all the people in the Broadway play with Adam. And Hannah is just sitting there like seeing everybody else live their dreams. And she's like, Well, fuck. And then she, of course, has to make it by herself about herself being like, I got fired today on purpose. And they're like, okay. And she's like, isn't my life crazy? And she's like, everybody's like, no, you're being weird. Thank you for flea bagging that. You just did one woman show. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it was really good and very to the point. But I would like to say on the record, theater people, y'all got to stop. You got to stop. <laughs> like everything is on the stage. And then why is everything so like, the energy when when I'm thinking about seriousness, right? Mm. I'm thinking about we're in a box, and like all we have is like on or off, and I hate that when we're outside and it's like just be open, free to the like people say dumb shit to me all day, especially in conversations, and we outside. And if <laughs> I was silent and weird and made them feel weird every single time. That's exhausting. Yeah, just keep it really moving. Is. Like it's all right. Yeah. Like you quit. Okay, girl, what was you wearing? Like let's get into it. Like let's like like let's have fun. If you're gonna look like a fool in front of us, let's go with it. You know. Yeah. The silence. It it did give very much theater. Like mm, can't relate. Like ugh. I mean, it doesn't even yeah. feel in New York. It feels like we have so many conversations. And I mean, you do in public, and you're saying the weirdest, worst things. At some point, it kind of just like the fact of it wears off, where you feel cringe about it. Yeah, but it feels like some of these people are brand new to New York. The way mm -hmm. they're conducting themselves with like mm -hmm. with the silence, like they are kind of going out in public, and like that's like my grandma. She was a real estate agent in her small town, and she felt like a local celebrity. So we always had to be like on our best behavior because mm -hmm. it reflected on her. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> and I and I think that's another thing that comes with like uh, getting older is like, yes, you want people to, you know, make you look good. But in reality is you don't have no hold over nobody, mm. people. And it's actually a best reflection of you if you're letting your people do what they do. And then it's like, if you don't want that around, I'm not inviting you out no more. But I'm not going to be like, you have to stop. I'm <laughs> like, look like an asshole. So when I when we get to the next spot, oh girl, you getting a <laughs> no 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 you can't oh did you did you forget what you just did at the last spot? You're not coming with us. It's not happening. Whoa. I didn't know you could have so much power. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't as a as a people pleaser and like wanting people to like love me, no, but I do have a way of like having some type of honesty where I put a, a thin boundary, the thinnest, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. chiffon boundary of like, I'm going to tell you, I don't know if I'm going to stick with this boundary, but I'm going to tell you just so you know how I feel when we move forward. You're climbing the fourth wall. I am. <laughs> <laughs> scaling it. You're scaling <laughs> January the 6th. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what other plot line did we miss? I just so Jessa and the artist, I mean really quickly, we already said it before, but she's the luckiest girl alive and the unluckiest girl alive, but her own yeah. uh, bad luck in some senses too. But like it's like I it think, is like yeah. I'm glad Jasper's gone. Last episode, Felicity Jones played the Coke addict's daughter and was like, Jasper, like, come be a dad. And so he like cut things off with Jessa and now Jessa like doesn't have her Coke. And so she's really mm. trying to like get sober. She's sobered again. up and immediately got a job. And immediately the coolest job on earth, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Things are going a lot better for her than Marnie. I know. Why? I'm such why, an empath why, for Marnie. Why why do you say things are so bad for Marnie? Well, Marnie is just like, um, you know, being an assistant for this woman that she thinks is dumb and hates, and then like is feeling like no man is loving her because she can't get Desi to care about her. And then also just like her music career just really isn't doing what she wants it to. I know, but it's so new. I say, I feel like this is the best Marnie's done in seasons really? during right now. Like she has I a job feel... closer to what she's wanted and now she has a creative she's outlet like she really standing wanted. in that gallery in that pencil skirt and I'm like, I, I need to give her It's up. her own thing though. It has nothing to do with her actual situation. So why, but yeah. why does she like, why does she think this woman is stupid? Oh, because she oh. is. Because she's 22 years old, but actually 24, but lying for attention. And um, she doesn't actually know how to run a gallery. Like, she's like, 
oh, Marnie, can you deal with this? I actually go to therapy for three hours mm-hmm. and I actually go to Kate Spade and swing by and then come back to the gallery. Right. And Marnie's kind of running it all just because the girl yeah. is rich, Sujin. Um, but I also think like Sujin is such a challenging person in Marnie's life because Marnie is so... Um, Sujin is Greta Lee. Greta Lee, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Eats. Eats. Yeah. Eats down. Oh my god. Every Respect. single scene. We have I'm to like, we have to bow down to Greta Lee. I okay. Know. She's been doing this and she's been quiet about it. She's like, she's not even that flashy type of actor. Yeah. But like she's not on Instagram either. No, 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 no. But to see her, like, um, when she did uh Russian Russian doll. Yeah. And then to see her in past lives, I'm like, do you understand the severity of how like good she is? It's ridiculous. It's unreal. She's so good. And, and she you could put her Jen. in anything. Mm-hmm. And I like her in anything. Like even when she's being Sujin. Sujin, I'm like, nah, she's this girl knows how to embody a character. All our TikTok clips of like the Sujin scenes, all the comments are just like Greta Lee, Greta Lee, Greta Lee, Greta yeah. Lee. We love we stand, her. We stand. I, do you she, think that you have amazing high... cheekbones? You can be one of the most versatile actresses of our time. She's so good at rain, like to play Sujin and then play that girl in Russian Doll and then like Past Lives. And what's the a movie that just came out where she's scary looking? Oh. She's yeah. always gorgeous. Okay, yeah, no she's always gorgeous. But, um, <laughs> Sujin is so free and Marnie is so like by the book and like trying to like do everything in a certain way. So I think like seeing Sujin really come into her creative energy and it just work out for her while Marnie is like beating the pavement so hard is like frustrating for Marnie because she doesn't know what she's doing. Yeah, but she wrote like a whole studio album in a day. With Jesse. <laughs> oh, which by the way, Jack... I watched the like bonus features of this episode and Hannah was like, my boyfriend Jack Antonoff wrote that folk song. Isn't it good? <laughs> In the interview, I'm like, stop it. L-O-L. Oh, I love. God. But wait. Okay. Let's, let, but also let's get into Sujin money, right? Mm-hmm. So like there's so much freedom in having money, coming from money, being privileged, right? So that's, I think that was just like a extension of like, hey, when you got it like that, what you thinking too much about? Just do what you do. Yeah, we going to Kate Spade, babe. Swipe the card. And somebody <laughs> else going to do the job. Now, for Marnie, right, she could be mad at Su Jin, like, oh, she's not doing her job. But now you are actually learning. Mm. And you're learning on your own. And you're going to figure it out. And you should be taking notes. So that when you want to open your own shit or want to do, you already have this experience. Because this dumb bitch... She didn't pay the way for you, but she gave you the space to learn when you really weren't qualified anyway. So that's a what? A W. Oh, that's a w. wow. That's you a W. That's an amazing point. That's a W. Even though no one's qualified, still Marnie isn't qualified as well. And let me yeah. tell you, I learned that in <laughs> LA. Most people are not qualified. They don't know what they're doing, but they've been thrown into a situation and also given that like alley-oop of like, you can do it from your like also delusional network. Like, yeah, you should have this job. So you take that and you move on and other people see that and they're going to jump on that bag wagon because they're like, yeah, you should have this job. But then the realty is the other people know that you don't know what you're doing. But nobody really wants to call out people who really don't know what they're doing because they need to have access to those people because then they're going to get a hookup. You're that so is so real. Right. I lived in oh LA for God. two years. <laughs> that is LA in a nutshell. LA if you don't, you've never been to LA, that's what it is. The whole two years I was there, I was just like, oh, it's just people think they deserve things mm-hmm. and then they are doing them. Like, it's not that deep. It's not meritocracy. It's just like people Mm-mm. being like, yeah, this is the life I'm going to live. And then they live it. Mm-hmm. Like, oh it God. really opened up my mind to be like, oh, like, we have such limiting beliefs. Well, it, it, people get that's why the conversation of nepotism, you know, because, you know, people can't stand Lena Dunham. They really they be ready to fight and have these conversations. But it's like if I, Sydney Washington, have money, came from money, I'm putting my people on. Like, mm. why? Yeah. I want to if I'm doing something, I want to be with the people who I know that I love that I'm going to have a good time with and that I quote, quote, believe in. That's what it is. Why are you like all of a sudden, yeah, I'm going to put my hand in this like random hat and then pick up somebody that I'm like, yeah, they're not in my circle. Let's give them a go. No, it's just like, and if I have kids, why would I want my kids to struggle? Why would I want anybody around me to struggle? Now, I do have a problem with nepotism when it comes to like, you know, white people, but like- (laughs) It is what it is. That's just, that's like, in no way, if you are like, I had a whole bunch of money and I write a show, 
right? Mm. I'm going to put on randos. It's no, 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 no. No, you want to be with your folks. And that's why sometimes a lot of things are not good because you're like, Let's they're not put good. this random group together. But Lena Dunham, we have to give it to her. She put everybody who was in girls was supposed to be there. Yeah. yeah. And she put them on. Like your her relationship with Jemima Kirk, Lena Dunham is like yeah. the exact thing you're describing. And it works so well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not like she was putting on people that you're like, oh, there's so many other. It just so happened that the, the other people were not like of other backgrounds or whatever mm-hmm. because of, you know, her circle. But at least she was putting people on that you're like, yeah, well, yeah. Well, she wrote a show about her friends, and yeah. they know how to play themselves, at least. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's what it's going to be. Yeah. Because let me tell you, when I get my stuff, I'm putting on my friends, just yeah. period. And being in New York, you're like, oh, I see. I see people doing the work and being talented, like, every day. Mm. Every day. They deserve. And even if they're not where they're supposed to be, they deserve. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? Talent goes Fairly far in New York. Girl, get your Glock. It's okay. rapid fire time. <laughs> this is an amazing segment where we ask you so many questions. It gets harder every time to say that. <laughs> really quick. Um, and then you just answer them as quick as you can. Are you ready? Okay, yeah. Are you a schoolgirl or are you getting schooled, girl? Uh, I'm a schoolgirl. Are you the voice of your generation or a voice of a generation? I'm I'm a voice. Period. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be like, there's a there. I'm just a voice. You're just a voice. <laughs> um, what's your favorite font? Favorite font? Oh, I don't remember them. I just, I just look and it. If it look right <laughs> on the stories, I'm like, put it up there. Love. <gasps> oh, sorry. What would you bring to your interview with Patty Lapone? No, who? Who would you bring to your interview with Patty Lapone? Who would I bring? Yeah, like friend, family. Um, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna bring my best friend Marie Faustin. Um, yeah. Because she's going to make me calm. Um, she's going to be funny. She's probably going to get the job. Like, she's <laughs> not, like if the job, if I thought I wanted the job, she might get it because she's just not going to care. She's actually Jessa. She's, she's Jessa. Jessa. She's the real Jessa. <laughs> <laughs> Clementines, do you like them? Obsessed. Oh, breaking a fourth wall or climbing it? Um, climbing it. And why do you want to get fired? Why do I want to get fired? So I can get some rest. Yeah. <laughs> I, want to, yeah. I need to sleep. For I once. don't. Yeah. Should we ask the other ones? I know we put so many. We've never taken this, written this many. Okay. What time of the night do you take your bra off? I'm mm. like, <laughs> is that too Ooh. intimate? No, that's not. That's <laughs> not. Uh, I think it's, it depends because sometimes you just feel like I just want to sleep in my bra type mm. of night. Mm. Um, for the most part, I'm taking it off as soon as I get in. Let's take it off. It's yeah, the release. As soon as the door shuts. Yeah. What, what do we have this bra on? Who's here? No one's, no one's watching. Oh take God, it off. I wish I had a bra to take off. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds so good. There, it sounds so there, bad all day, are. and it sounds really good to take There's off. There's an emotional that. bra that needs to be released. Oh yeah. Metaphor. It's a tension in my face. Wait, and last question. Do you think Desi is hot? Oh, and you're bi now. Yeah, so it's perfect time to ask. No, no, no. I'm gay, not blind. So I can't acknowledge oh. when a man looks good. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, it's so hard to know with him. He's got a guitar. So that already, that makes you look hot. better. Yeah. I think he's hot in the bear. I don't know if I think he's, he's giving. Even, yeah, oh, he's giving. I love the, the manic. Oh, he's just a mania. Yeah, it's, it's like really a hectic. Damn hot. Hot. I'm, Someone who's calm, you're like, loser. <laughs> like, I don't want it. Whoa. Be stressed. That is really Be true. Be stressed. Be stressed I'm is wet. really I'm hot. stressed. <laughs> Do you like that in a relationship or just TV? Uh, this is for me to know. <laughs> I love when I don't know where I stand with the person. That is where I want to really be. That's really hot. Always. Really? Yeah. I'm always like, okay, I want to work harder. <laughs> let's get in. Let's get like, Let's get involved. You know? Like, when I know that the person is pressed, I'm a step back. Because you get bored? Not bored. It's just like, why you let me see all your cards? Oof. Right. Because I have to stop myself. Yeah. Because I am very transparent. Like, yeah. you saw how I was emailing y'all. Okay, so I'm here. I, I'm four stops away. Like, and, and you guys are sweet and you're probably like, oh, she cares. But somebody else who was interested in me, they're like, 
are you a fucking loser? Why are you telling me all this shit? Just get here. <laughs> right. Just get here. I'll well, see you when you I get here. I would email like that, of course. Oh, that's why you yeah. probably like, you were like, I already know where she's at. Oh, of course. I'm like, we'll up our emoji sending to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would, I, when you were forced up the way, I already knew that before you sent the email. Uh, <laughs> I love it. It was just a sound. Well, we sound. have one more segment of the podcast. Yeah. It's called That Outfit in Brooklyn. Wait, can we ask it together? It's so funny. Oh, yeah. No, I thought you would join in. Sorry, I, I was he scrolling. Text, <laughs> I was looking at that photo of me on Instagram. That, that Outfit in, in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. This is the segment where we compare Brooklyn then to Brooklyn, Brooklyn now. now. Was there anything that stuck out to you in this episode that you're like, this is so 2012, this would never happen now? I love – I can start us if we yeah, want. You know, this isn't even t- so 2012, but it's like – it's so cool there was actually a dialogue back then and still dialogue today. Hair mass. When were hair masks mm. popularized? I didn't feel like it was around this time period that people were finally like – Putting yeah, it was the very beginning of like the self care marketing. Yeah, literally. Era. I mean, I don't know. If a hair mask feels like such a new concept to me, in a way like we always had face masks and they were blue, but now we kind of are moving up to hair and they're really popular now. But Shoshana really stuck the landing with that. Like Amelia dyed her hair shiny yesterday. Yeah, I, I do that do. hair mask thing where it's like you can leave it in for three minutes or three hours and it will look a little different. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm in. Here's forty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one for me. Yeah, that. There's a lot of products. And I guess like open mic culture of like um that kind of style of rapping that girl did. Where oh, she that's Lil them- Frex. Yeah. That's um, Lisa Traeger's really good friend. Oh, and really? I, yeah, and I met Lil Frex, I, I think, I believe Wait, through Lisa. is that the girl from A League of Their Own? Um, Lil Frex? Yeah. No, I think she she might have been. I'm not up to date on it. But she I think she was in Wild and Out and she's she's okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, she's yeah. really good. Yeah. And she punks her Twitter at the end. Yeah, Lil Frex, she she does her thing. <laughs> well, Shout when out Marnie to her. and Desi are having that really powerful conversation before they go on the whole time. It's like dick, 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 dick. It's just so funny <laughs> to have the contrast. Yeah. Oh my god. They they ate with that. They ate with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was a really good scene. Yeah, I'm, just thinking, <laughs> I'm just thinking from like a shooting perspective, like how did they create the energy that they were able to portray? Like it seems really hard with all those shots. And it's angles. New York. It's yeah. like, no. I mean, when when you see shots of New York and there's like silence, it's like, that's not true. Yeah. There's always going to be something in the background. Somebody's going to be screaming. There's Somebody's going to be rapping. People are going to be having sex. Cats are going to be crying. Like that's just what it is. Oh my God, cats will be crying. Cats, cats will be crying. Cats will be crying. Oh my God. I, I guess. AKA, I'm the cat. <laughs> duo, duo folk songs at an open mic doesn't. Oh. Do you, I feel like that. That exists. I feel you like know that what? has to happen last. My, not to bring up B again, but B's roommate is folk couple. It's actually really similar parallel to Clem, but not the same. So, what? I because they're You're not in love. Code. So my boyfriend's roommate is an indie folk artist, oh, and he right. does music with one girl. How does that feel? Um, great. He's actually the nicest person alive. Um, but it is really interesting because he has a female partner that's not his girlfriend, and everyone online is like, you guys should date, you guys should date, you guys should date. But he's had a long-time girlfriend of five mm-hmm. years. Oh, so it's that like similar of like, like being friends with a girl and doing music production with them and like the connotation of that always. So this episode is timeless. <laughs> this episode is timeless. <laughs> um, when you were talking about um, the outfits – Mm-hmm. I just want to be honest, yo. Nobody can really dress like 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 just to keep. It doesn't matter what year people are not dressing well, people are not and dressing that's okay because well. we're very busy and there's always something to do. You're and, dressing well. And, uh, well, I you know I, I put you something together. I put it together, <laughs> but like I'm also all about like convenience and the price range and how I'm feeling in Zara at the moment and mm-hmm. if the fluorescent lighting in the dressing room is acting right. Uh, but at the end of the day, like when I watch girls, I was like. I don't see it. I oh, I know. It's no, bad. Like, ever, ne- never anything Hannah's wearing, I want it in the trash. I don't. <laughs> and it's not. Oh, that it's, orange top when it, she's at GQ this episode. I mean. Did you see this? It was like yeah, all oranges. And yeah. she wears a completely pant that makes no sense at all. Yeah. And I want I want a preference. It had nothing to do with body type. It's just mm-hmm. the, what your the patterns are. It's bad. Yeah. It's all bad. It's not good. Um, you know, Marnie is playing it safe always, always. Ooh, she's not that gonna skirt be she's in. Yeah, it's I mean, it, which is fine. But at the end of Jess the day, that's actually her dress is really cute. I didn't know that. Let's also keep it real that like style is hard and it's so hard to like put a story together and think like think about like, oh, what this is reflect me as a person mm. when yeah. you have like a full day of things to do and then you got night or whatever. But my issue is is the people who be critiquing. It's like um, what's her name? What's her name? Um, 
you, you oh Joan Rivers. Mm. She was, you know, fashion police is like, I don't I'm not going to any Bergdorf and be like, give me what Joan Rivers is wearing. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's like she, legend, legend, respect, of love course. her, RIP. But it's like I'm never gonna go that off on what people are wearing in in, in 2012 or 2023, because it's like dressing is hard. And let's yeah. not even talk about when the climate is changing, boo. Summer, mm. I think summer is the easiest thing to like put on an outfit. But like when we get, when we're oh, in I like know. fall, winter, first of all, this is a coat city. I'm this is a coat this coat community. Coats <laughs> are the outfits, and so to find a good coat, the coat that's like, oh, this is this gonna look good on, off, more so on. It's hard. <laughs> it's very very hard. So, but yeah, the, all anything that they wear in girls is probably in Buffalo Exchange right now. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, for was, for, oh, for exactly. twenty dollars, they're throwing it out at Beacons. Uh, that is th- Beacons is throwing it out. Buffalo Exchange is keeping it's on it. Rack. It's yeah. on the rack, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not giving it up. They're gonna still like drag it on and be like, "No, girl, this is the." And then they won't take in your luggage of stuff that you're like, "No, no, this is I in love season." Trying to sell to them, and they're like, "We won't take any of this." And then I'm like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna peruse the shop," and I'm like, "Oh, but you take all of this." <laughs> oh, I, I I one time I picked up a shirt that looked like a washcloth, and I said. So, my J brand jeans, not good. Mm. This, yes. <laughs> okay, cool. It's all beauty's in the eye to behold. Oh yeah. When they, one time Buffalo they dragged Station me, they're like, I, I came in with peep toes, and they, I think it was peep toe from Louboutin or something like that, and they were like, yeah, pe- peep toe is just like a never in style. Oh. Oh. Never. They hurt you. And I said, well, tell <laughs> Jessica Simpson and tell <laughs> Simpson. Carrie Bradshaw that shit. I never not saw those hoes in a fucking peep toe. So how dare you? How dare oh they? Oh my god! I, Buffalo Exchange, we're gonna have words with you. Yeah, out we're tomorrow. calling oh. you out, not in. Buffalo Exchange, the truest bully of them all. I'm For, gonna say that. More than Beacons. Yeah, well, isn't that a Broad City episode with like Phoebe Robinson being like, no? Yes, but Beacon, I Beacon has some organization. Oh, they have so good that's stuff there too. They're color coded. They're, they're color coordinated, and they're like the styles go. So I feel like I go, could go and beacon and like actually look for something. Mm-hmm. Uh, Buffalo Exchange is like, so I just did drugs, and we're just gonna go. No, literally. <laughs> well, I can <laughs> beacon. <It's- laughs> we're just gonna see how this goes. <laughs> Well, That's so real. It's so well because every time I go inside Beacon's closet, Ella Emhoff is selling her clothes there at the same time. Really? So it, you know it's good. You know <laughs> what they're doing because Ella Emhoff's dropping off. <laughs> I love that girl. Is there anything else from this episode? Mm-hmm. I saw Axe Body Spray. Does that resonate with anyone? Do oh, they, yeah. Are boys still doing bot? But none of us know about this. No, they are because my sister who's 11 is like, all the boys in my grade are using Axe. It smells awful. I'm like, girl, yes. It's still around. It's played out. And um, I, first of all, I'm my nose is very sensitive, especially because I am sober. And you know, the rebuilding of the skin in my nose oh, it has right. happened, <laughs> and so it's I'm really on alert with smells. And I just want to say that a lot of people do not care about what they smell like, and it's that's fine for them. But me, I, I get, I get at least <laughs> three times a day. Someone be like, "Damn, you smell good." No, you smell so good, good though. That's the first thing I said I to care, you when you walked in. I care in. about, I feel like when your scent comes, then it reminds them of you and then it sets the tone of how somebody should treat you. That's so Oh real. my God. Yeah, look the camera for that. Yeah. <laughs> we learned so many life lessons today, I feel like. Wait, I need a signature Oracle set. Oracle just sat down for yeah. two hours really. with the kids and just for the no, free. Please. For the free. This should have been on Patreon. I know. I know, literally. This whole episode, Patreon. The fact that we have to go pretend to be like in that NATO conference for no. sex after this is It's okay. This is You're hell. learning from it. And you're going to grow. You're going to yeah. be better people. You need yeah. to. You. I want more people to go through bad yeah. So that they can be good when good happens. Totally. And that's the problem with like dating is that people are so used to like, I only want to get somebody that I know I can get. That's lazy. Mm. You make people work like, or you make yourself work. And so that's why we get complacent <laughs> when we date people. Cause you're like, well, yeah, they like me. It's I like, don't like anything. I mean, I love everything you're saying, but I don't like it. I know. It hurts. It hurts. I don't like it I've for a single it. sex then. I've learned it on my own, and I, every day I'm like, I'm going to die alone. Do you think dating a friend is bad then? Um, do it's you, too easy. Do you care about your friend? Well, currently I'm dating someone that I was 
<laughs> and we were friends for a while and now we're dating you know what but you're gay yeah. so there's chances of I you guys that. are going to be friends forever e- even if it doesn't work out oh right right right, right in right. heterosexual relationships <laughs> oh, i'm gonna say you date a friend y'all are done it's over it's uh you'll never will see each other or it'll be a vicious like yeah yeah, yeah i feel good fake. about this and yeah. fine yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. You, yeah, you came inside me, and now we're gonna go have a coffee. Like, no, I would love <laughs> no. that to be the last line of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you came inside me, and now we go get a coffee. Yeah, credit. No, wait. Do you have anything you yeah, want to plug? Oh yeah, because it will come out in two weeks. Two FY. weeks. Two weeks. What's the date in two weeks? It's gonna be, be November sixth or seventh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Dope. So I have um, a show for New York Comedy Festival Ooh. called uh, Sid Got Game. And it's because I'm inf- infamously bad at like, you know, having Riz and like talking to people in a romantic way. So it's going to be my friends either doing stand up or giving me advice. Oh Wait, my where God. is that? It's going to be at Chelsea Music Hall, 10 p.m. Please come. What day? Tell the kids. Uh, November 8th. November 8th. Perfect. Amazing. We'll link it in the description. We'll, we'll be back next week for the season finale. Um, but for now, bye. Oh, oh my God. You are-